All right. Good morning again, grade eight. We are now in the continuation of our topic, right? In the digestive system. Okay. Last meeting, we we're actually talking about um the endocrine function of um the pancreas. Okay, again, your pancreas has two functions, two main functions. These are the endocrine function and the exocrine function. When you're talking about exocrine function, since it's exo, exocrine, it secretes digestive enzymes. Okay? The lipase, amylase, and chemotrypsin. Okay? Or chemotrypsin. Okay? The lipase actually reacts with lipids for digestion. Amylase is for the breakdown of carbohydrates. And chemotrypsin or chemotrypsin is for the breakdown of proteins, right? For the endocrine function, okay, since it is endocrine, meaning to say it releases hormones, okay? When you're talking about endocrine glands, this releases hormones, okay? Necessary for what? For metabolic processes, okay? It is actually performed, or the endocrine function is performed by the eyelids of Langerhans, okay? Which has four types of cells, three of which release important hormones, okay? Number one is the alpha cell, which produce glucagon, okay? The second is beta cells, which produces insulin, okay? And the third one is the delta cells, which produces somatostatin, okay? The last group is called C-cells, which has no well-defined function, but I do believe this is because of the evolution of man. Okay, We tend not to use that one. But the three, the alpha cell, beta, and delta, has a very, very, very significant function in the human body. Right? The insulin controls the blood sugar level by lowering the amount of glucose. Glucose is the sugar in the blood, right? And if, it, if this function is impaired, this may result to a condition known as diabetes mellitus. By the way, there are two cases or there are two types of diabetes, okay? Sure, you have diabetes over sugar, that is mellitus, okay? If the diabetes, um, if the condition states that it has over sugar in the blood, or the blood glucose is high enough in the body, or the concentration is high enough in the blood, and then say yes, the case or the condition is called diabetes mellitus. But if in the case, or some cases, that the, the, the body or the blood has lower or has its lowest um, sugar glucose content in the blood, it is called diabetes insipidus. Okay? It is actually driven by the hormone insulin, which was created by your pancreas. Okay? Glucagon. It is actually the opposite of insulin. It traces the amount of glucose in the blood if we actually need more glucose. Okay? When needed by the body. Okay? Case. Cases to case. Basis. If in case there is no glucagon, then it says it will result to diabetes insipidus, the one that I'm telling you a while ago. So you will have a lower amount or concentration of glu glucose in your blood. So the case is diabetes insipidus. I'll type it in our GC or in our chat box, rather. Diabetes. Insipidus. Okay, hang on. Okay, that's diabetes insipidus. Okay, again, this case. If diabetes mellitus has the higher concentration of sugar in the blood, in this case, 
it has a lower concentration of sugar in the blood because of the absence of glucagon or the impairment of glucagon. Okay. On the other hand, somatostatin inhibits or suppresses further production of digestive enzymes in the pancreas. Okay. So if this is your pancreas, you can see that the, there is a common bile duct going to the gallbladder, okay? Because um, your bile is concentrated in the gallbladder, bile abdo, okay? Which is really important for the digestion process, okay? And this is now the form of your pancreas. Again, your pancreas has two major functions. The exocrine function, which releases <clears throat> the exocrine function, which releases important um, elements or important secretes important enzymes rather, and the endocrine function, which releases hormones. Okay, again, exocrine is for the secretion of enzymes or enzymatic activities. Okay, the lipase, amylase, and chemotrypsin, while the endocrine function will tell you about the secretions of the hormones. Okay. The blood-rich liver, we'll, we move now, we need to move to liver, which contains around 13% to 14% of blood's blood supply or the body's blood supply, also plays important or major role in the digestive or digestion process. Ask the following. By the way, do you have any questions so far? Questions? Please no. raise it. All right. Please let me know if you have questions. Okay. These are the function of your liver. Number one is the production of bile. Okay. Bile is stored in the gallbladder. This is to make a concentrated bile or abdo. So in this area, it's abdo. And acts as a fat emulsifier. When you say fat emulsifier, it's... It actually, it will make the fat thinner emulsify. What else? The other term is to dissolve. It breaks down fats into simpler forms in the small intestine during digestion. Okay? Bile is important. If you have a problem with your bile, tendency is you will have also a problem digesting fats. Okay? That's a big problem. Storage of glycogen for conversion to glucose as needed by the body. Okay, it acts as storage. Your liver now becomes the storage of glycogen for the conversion to glucose as needed by the body. The next is production of cholesterol. Okay, aside from your taking cholesterol, your liver also creates its own cholesterol. The cholesterol is converted into bile that is stored in the gallbladder. Okay. Aids in regulating amino acids in our blood by maintaining enough levels of amino acids and excreting excess amount. That is actually one of the functions of your liver. Okay. It regulates the amino acid because if it is too much in the blood, tendency is you will have what? A particular problem with your amino acids or with the formation of your muscles. Okay, it needs to be excreted. Okay, the maintaining or the maintenance of this is through your liver. Okay, storage of iron. Okay, it is also a storage of iron. For, if, for example, if your body needs more iron, then tendency is your liver will produce or will, your liver will just um, get the storage or get just get the amount of iron in the storage okay in the liver to balance or to have a homeostatic environment to have a to, to have a level of iron a correct level of iron in the blood okay if this is your liver as you can see you have your gallbladder in the lower okay the common bile duct is in here also and you have two lobes in your liver. The right lobe is bigger than the left lobe. Okay, this is now your liver. Let's move now to large intestine. Do you have any questions so far? Question, question, please raise your question. 
Okay, your large intestine, food cannot be digested, are now deposited in the large intestine. This is also known as your colon. Okay, the large intestine mainly function as the site for water reabsorption from the undigested food. Okay, the diameter of the large intestine is much larger than the small intestine. It is about 1.5 meters and is divided into the cecum, ascending colon, the transverse colon, the descending colon, and the sigmoid or sigmoid colon. Okay, again, it is divided into number one, cecum, number two, ascending colon, number three, transverse colon, number four, descending colon, and number five, sigmoid, sigmoid colon. Okay, some amount of water, vitamins, and electrolytes are reabsorbed or, or are absorbed by a large intestine. No enzymes are produced by the large intestine. Rather, it releases mucus to lubricate the food as it moves along. Okay, mucus also aids in keeping the fecal matter or your feces together. Feces are waste materials from food, including digestive juices bacteria, and fiber, okay? If this is your large intestine, your colon, you can see is the cecum here, appendix, which can cause appendicitis, okay? If you're, if you're going to look at it, it looks, it looks like a sac, okay? So if in case this becomes irritated, tendency is you will have appendicitis and the room and it needs to be removed, okay? Secum, we have ascending colon, transverse, okay? Descending colon, sigmoid colon. Also the rectum, and the last is the anus. In the anus, you can actually observe anal sphincter there. Okay. Rectum and anus. From the large intestine, waste materials travel to rectum, which serves as a storage of feces before it is finally expelled from the body to the, you know, to the anus and with the anal sphincter. Okay? The strong muscular walls of rectum expand to hold feces until nerves around the area tell the brain that we have to push it out of the body. This is known as bowel movement. Okay. Sir, I have LBM, okay? loose bowel movement. Okay. The loose bowel movement happens when there is there are some irregularities in the rectum. Okay, that it actually sends signals to the brain that it needs to be eliminated. Okay, the anal canal is found at the endmost part of the digestive tract. It is also distinguished from the rectum through the transition of internal walls. Okay, whereas rectum is lined with mucous membrane, the anal canal's inner layer or inner lining is skin-like in nature. Okay, that is why you can actually distinguish them. Okay, are you still with me? Are you still with me? Yeah. All right. It is divided into three parts. The upper two-thirds is longitudinal fold. Okay, the upper two-thirds of the rectum is longitudinal form, and the lower one-third has internal and external sphincter muscles which controls the expelling of pieces okay and the external anal opening it is called the anus okay anus okay i think we discussed a lot uh, with the digestive system okay we are now in the end part of um the gut the the, the gut the gut gui rather git rather the gastrointestinal tract, okay? What I want you to do now is I prepared something for you, by the way, okay? What I want you to do now is I want you to go to your LMS, okay? And do activity number one, which is concept analysis, okay? Again, I want you to go to your LMS. We still have time left. I want you to go to your LMS and answer activity number one, which is concept analysis, all right? Grade eight. Yeah. Okay. I think that's the deal for today, class. Thank you for your participation. Hopefully, others also will participate.
hope you learned something out of our simple discussion. Right? Have a nice everyone. Goodbye. Take care. Oh, wait. Let's have a picture taking first. Can we have picture taking? Please turn on your camera. Okay. Okay, turn on your camera. Okay, eyes on the camera in five, four, three, two, one. Smile, smile. Another take, smile. All right. Have a nice day, everyone. Take care. Bye-bye. Please do your activity, activity number one, all right? Bye-bye.